Hey, fearless friends, it's Jen Valenga here. 2021, did your backup plan continues? We aren't quite at a year yet. I launched on February 3rd of 2020, and boy, was it ever a year. So what I have for you right now as the start of 2021 is a collage episode. All of my guests from 2020 and their answers to my question, did you have a backup plan? Coming up in the next couple of weeks, two more episodes. One where I ask, what was your biggest risk? And the final, have you made it? As you may remember from my last episode, I'm on sabbatical in the spring semester of 2021. Rather than spend my whole weekend on my podcasting hobby, I can move it on into the weekday. So I'll be doing editing on Monday and releasing on Tuesdays. For my guest interviews in 2021, I'm focusing on artists who have a footprint in the digital space so that you can learn about that process. Along with all of the obvious horrors of 2020, some good things came out of it. Turns out the pandemic brought a lot of babies to my guests in 2020. Lindsay Levine from episode 15 had her baby boy just shortly after we interviewed. I interviewed Sarah Andreas and her mom for Mother's Day. That's episode 17. Sarah had her baby boy on December 25th. Joshua Henry, just one episode later, episode 18, announced that he and his wife are expecting twins in the spring. Ross Evans and his wife are expecting their second child also in the spring. Those are the ones I know about, so congratulations to my guests and to you listeners. Thanks for listening. I'm glad you're back. Becca Cody, did you ever have a backup plan? You know, <laughs> no, I didn't. I was like, this is this is what I'm going to do. And, you know, we'll we'll cross that bridge when we get there if it if it starts to not work out. But I don't know if you can consider working in a restaurant a backup plan. I just knew that I needed to make money somehow. David Valentine. Does the layperson understand what you do? Uh, periodically, people get it. <laughs> the degree of like understanding that it's actually a job is fascinating. My dad had asked me, not even the, do you have a backup plan? It was just, what do you see? How do you see yourself ending up? And I said, I don't know. You know how like in Star Wars, there are a lot of aliens and other creatures that aren't humans? I want to be that person. Lauren Hirsch, before you went to school, were you being encouraged to follow a different path? Uh, when I was in high school, it was sort of, I spent a lot of time doing like drawing and painting. And it was sort of, do I want to go to art school or do I want to go to theater school? And I decided on theater school. But I've never, I mean, maybe I've been naive, but I never thought I should think of something else. Like this isn't going to work out. I think I always just figured I would make it work. Clyde Voce. Once you knew you wanted to pursue this career, did your parents or you feel like you had to have a backup plan? Yes and no. They were totally supportive of me going into this, but they did always want me to have, I wouldn't even necessarily call it a backup plan, even though it's what they said, because they still wanted me to pursue this, find something else, but not to replace what you want to do, just in the meantime, I guess. You know, she told me stay at home for like a year or so and like save up my money. And I was like, ah, I want to go and just do it. Sarah Schreiber. Honestly, I don't even remember having too many like thoughts I, about it. I just did it. Ross Evans. There was nothing ever. I was never persuaded from pursuing a degree in the arts. If anything, uh, my parents put a lot of pressure on me to succeed in the arts. So actually my sister, my older sister was a musical theater major as well. And she's honestly probably a big reason why I first was pursuing the musical theater. It often happens like that if we really are kind of honest with ourselves that it's somebody opens up a door for us that shows us that that's sort of the way in. Very few, almost no one kicks doors open themselves or stumbles upon something themselves. It's always sort of this human connection that, that I personally think kind of like guides our path. Katie McClellan. Did you, do you have a backup plan? So that's tricky. I I don't have a backup plan per se, but I think just inherently the fact that I earned a college degree is just, just for peace of mind in and of itself, a backup plan that I, that I 
don't think about a lot. But, you know, if I just decided one day that this is too hard or circumstances changed or I don't want to do it anymore, whatever, I, I, I know that I have the raw materials to do something else. So I haven't, I haven't been putting my time and effort into developing, you know, another career path. I don't think that's helpful for you to split your efforts in that way. But obviously, we all need to pay rent. So I do think it's important that your side job or whatever it is that's paying your bills is something that doesn't drain you, you know, doesn't make you dread getting up in the morning. Tim Murray. My backup plan was my uh, forefront plan, I guess. I Because I didn't know anyone doing this and I just, I was, I was not the it kid in high school. So I didn't even apply to performing arts colleges. I was applying for journalism. Journalism was always what I was telling people I was going to do uh, or, you know, writing of, of some sort. And now that I've been performing for a long time, I then convinced myself that I wanted to be a TV writer and write for sitcoms and be in a writer's room. And that became my backup plan as I reached 30. Um, but then it turns out that's um, just as hard of a backup plan as acting. <laughs> right. Grace Douglas. When I was in college, I didn't necessarily envision myself living a life as an actor, you know, that was a member of Actors Equity. But again, it comes back to that belief in myself. I think that I couldn't necessarily picture that life for myself because I didn't know if I could do it. I think that backup plan implies do you have a way to make money if what you want to do? can't uh, pay the bills. I was babysitting to make money. Ultimately, no. I think also backup plan, having a backup plan implies this uh, narrative of, oh, I decided that after, if I hadn't booked any good roles after two years, then I would leave and go to medical school. It implies like a solid plan. And I definitely never had a solid plan for like, if I don't make it as an actor, I will do this entire career and life change. Marianne Torres. No, I I've had moments where I'm frustrated and I've looked, you know, like maybe I should go to grad school for I don't know what. Um, I got my yoga teacher training certification and I thought I was going to teach. And then I got theater jobs and then never taught. <laughs> <laughs> Logan Jones. Did you ever have some kind of backup safety net in the back of your mind when you started to pursue this? Totally. I didn't expect you to say totally. Let's hear it. <laughs> I I don't think it's something that I actually thought was a real option for me. A lot of the messaging that I got growing up was that I would be a great educator. So there's always been a little B in the back of my mind about going into education in some way. I think that the things that have set me apart in my career are the times that I've been risky and said, well, but that's not what I am really feeling in my gut right now. And I have to jump at this other thing that's less of a sure opportunity. Jenna Rubai. Did you have a backup plan yourself in your mind? Funny. No, <laughs> <laughs> I didn't. I truly was. I don't know. I feel like I was born like wanting to do this and I, but it, that's also a challenge because when, you know, the reality of it is you don't know if you're going to work. So much of it just depends on so many other people's decisions. And so much of it has to do, especially in theater, well, even in any industry, any, any entertainment industry, it's like, you know, you have to not think about it as like, and it's hard not to, but it's me. It, I wasn't good enough. I wasn't this enough. But like it is, it's other people's opinions. Alana Saunders. Um, I did take pre-med classes when I was at school because I really very much wanted it as, as something that if I decided that I wanted to go back, like if, if I didn't want to be a performer anymore, I only wanted to have to go back to undergrad for another year to finish up my credits. It was a very real backup plan for me and kind of continues to be. Um, I actually thought of it recently because my, one of my stage managers took EMT training. So she, even though she doesn't actually work as an EMT, 
she has that knowledge and because as a stage manager, she had three shows in a row where freak accidents happened. And then she realized that she wanted that information. She wanted to be able to be prepared. Anne Cofell Saunders. Was your undergraduate degree in theater? I wanted it to be. My parents um, insisted I have an English major because they felt that it, I needed a fallback position. I was involved in theater as I could possibly be, but my parents said no. They, they didn't, couldn't provide a financial safety net for me. I think my parents were like, follow your love, but be sure you have a secure job. And I think they wanted me to be a lawyer or something international. And I think that did impact me. I wandered and had some great experiences, but I kept coming back to theater. And so I went and got my MFA in playwriting and then pursued theater and then decided I need something that paid because I don't have a safety net. And so that's how I ended up in Los Angeles. Lindsay Levine. Um, I got a minor in public relations in college, but I don't even really know that I knew what that was. <laughs> like that wasn't a passion or anything. Um, so I wouldn't say I had a really clear backup plan, but I would say I was always sort of interested in other aspects of theater. Carrie, compare. What's funny is that... <laughs> You know, after we moved back and I I said, okay, we're going to go for this 100%. I had no thoughts of any kind of plan B, survival, nothing. I was like, I was like I'm in this. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to push and do everything that I possibly can to make it work. Sarah Andreas and Julie Fleischer. Did you have a backup plan, Sarah? Uh, no. <laughs> I know I decided. <laughs> yeah. No, I, I decided. I remember, Jen. And I, I love that you said this. I think it was freshman year. You, you were talking to, you know, my class and you were saying that, you know, success doesn't necessarily mean Broadway. It could mean it's whatever makes you happy in, in this art form. It could mean regional theater. It could mean community theater. It could mean, and, and I remember thinking, wow, that's really cool. I've never thought about it that way, but I'm going to be on Broadway. Yeah. <laughs> which, which is funny how cocky, I don't think it was like, oh, I'm, good enough to be on Broadway. It was just, no, that's what I want. And that's what I'm, I'm going to make sure that happens. Joshua Henry, did you have a backup plan? No, <laughs> <laughs> absolutely not. I don't know. Not one backup plan. I didn't, I, I just didn't, I didn't. Yeah. And maybe that's one thing that really helped me. Um, I, I think once I decided this is what I was going to do, I, I had no other thought in my head other than I'm going to, I loved it so much. You know what I mean? Like I loved it. I was obsessed with everything, acting, singing, and dancing. It's Josh Fiedler. I really wasn't fully aware of what all the jobs were. And I wasn't even when I finally got hired. I think schools are getting better at that now. And really, even as a performer, learning the business of being a performer, because you're your own business too. Travis Clor. I didn't. You know, and I kind of still don't. <laughs> <laughs> you know, there's there's one thing that brings me a lot of love and a lot of joy in my life, and that's singing and performing and being on stage. And I haven't found anything that kind of fulfills me like that. Of course, I'd be lying if I said that I, you know, during the the, the down times when you're looking like, okay, where's the next gig? And you're like, well, oh, maybe I should maybe I should go into real estate or something like that. But, you know, there's just, like I said, there's just nothing that, that fills me the way uh, being on stage does. Nick Francone. So did you have any kind of backup plan? I mean, you went from an undergraduate theater degree straight to a MFA in design. No, I was doing it. Um, yeah, I, I, I had gotten some offers that were scary to me coming out of undergrad. I was given an offer to go to a graduate school in Oregon and they were like, and the professor is probably going to retire in two years. Like that's a forever job. And, and I, I got scared by that because I was like, Oh, I see. Like this could be easily sort of dead end. Teresa Squire, your backup plan was I'm going to do this Pilates. I think it was a backup plan. I think it was, you know what, I'm going to go do this. And so it was a little bit of my escape plan. Sean Brown. No, 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 no. It's like we're paying all this money for school. We got to make it happen, you know? Uh, but yeah, I just, 
the joy I feel being on stage or performing is it's incredible. And so, yeah, there was never a sense of, well, if I don't make it, I'll just do this. It was like, well, you have to, you know, quote unquote, make it. Um, so, yeah, never, never really a backup plan. Maya Lynn Robinson. Was there any thought of a backup plan? No. So I, the funny thing is I got a small scholarship from my high school that helped me to not go to the military. So it was either go to the military or go to theater school. And the reason why I wanted to go to the military is I wanted stability. Michael McElroy. No. <laughs> no, I, I mean, there was just, in my mind, there was nothing else that I, that I, I knew we, I was passionate about in that way. Kui Gwen. No. No. I mean, I, I think that weirdly what I am doing is strangely my backup plan. Mm -hmm. I think I wasn't thinking big enough when I started to, to do all this. I didn't really think I was going to become like a professional actor when I was an editor or a professional writer. I thought I had the ability to to teach people about this stuff. Chantal Bilodeau. When I moved to the U.S. to go to graduate school, my backup plan was, well, if it doesn't work, I'll drive back to Canada. <laughs> that was the extent of it. Um, then I finished graduate school, moved to New York, got a, managed to get a place to stay. I had no job and was running out of money. And my backup plan was still, well, <laughs> if I run out of money, I'll go back to Canada and find a job there. Bliss Griffin. I do not believe in backup plans. But my mother is a very smart person. So her rule was, sure, I will pay every dime of you studying for a performance degree if by the time you graduate from high school, you can do everything that my department assistant can do. Kiki Rivera. And so theater was your backup plan. <laughs> theater was my strange backup plan. Yes. Education was your first plan and theater, theater became your backup plan. Yes. Yeah, I never even realized that until right now. Jerry J. Cranford. Um, no. No, I did not really have a backup plan. <laughs> I didn't really have that, you know, maybe somewhere in the cobwebs in the back. I thought, well, I could always go teach because that's what I was going to do to begin with. And I enjoy that. I was good at it. So I think that was always something that I thought might happen later in life, but I didn't know how. Laura Camion. To me, a backup plan is, is like when you choose a career that isn't even related to, to the arts in any way that it, that you choose because it feels like it will have some kind of stability. Mm-hmm. And I think people choose it because they don't realize that there can be a lot of jobs in the arts that also have stability. Vince Cardinal. You know, this question, and I've thought of this ever since you named your podcast. <laughs> you have to have a plan in the first place to have a backup plan. Good. And, and I've had no plan. Dr. Elisa Hurwitz. Do you see the artists that you're interviewing talking about a backup plan right now? Huh. I don't see them talking about, well, yes, but it's still in the arts. It's teaching. It's, it's, you know, it's, it's voice lesson, you know, providing voice lessons. Uh, it's pivoting, you know, coaching. Yeah. Creating podcasts. Yeah. Do I do see that? And I also see some people just kind of sitting tight and trying to wait it out. Mm hmm. Mm -hmm. It's really good to be back. Happy 2021. If you aren't following me already on Instagram, I'm Jen underscore Valenga, V-E-L-L-E-N-G-A. I post quotes and some throwback audiograms from guests from the past and future. So make sure you follow me over there. Thanks for listening. 